Hello friends, welcome to the tutorial and in this tutorial we are going to look at the way uh, DNA is packed inside uh, compact structure which is called chromosome. Now as we know uh, in all of uh, the eukaryotic organisms or high uh, or high order organisms we are having much more complex chromosome or much more and much much longer uh, DNA segments or gene segments to be encrypted so they need to store them inside uh, some compact region so they are storing these DNA materials uh, really making them compact now these are the structures called nucleosomes which are helping them to make those compact structure of DNA now if we look at the structure two important things you can notice one is protein and second one is called the DNA now this this strand uh, like parts are the DNA and these bead like sections are the proteins now these proteins are called histone proteins and rest of the things rest of the thread like structure is called the DNA in this case okay so two helix are not uh, pictured here or, or, or not mentioned here but this is uh, that uh, two helical structure of DNA okay now if we zoom in uh, one of this structure we find something like this so if we, if we look at the structure uh, let me take this out okay if we look at the structure yeah now here this is the structure now here this is the bead like structure what we have seen before so this is the bead like structure and this is the thread like structure which is DNA now this middle bead like structure is called the histone protein and as you can see in this picture this protein is not one unit protein this is um, made up with multiple subunits as you can see here blue red green yellow and these four different uh, subunits are in uh, together to make this kind of proteins okay now actually two different types uh, of uh, no actually four different types of uh, subunits uh, those are called histone subunits and they are having their own names like histone uh, 2a is histone 2b histone 3 and histone 4 so h2a h2b h3 and h4 uh, as abbreviated so they arrange themselves to make this bead and this bead is allowing the dna structures to wrap themselves around this bead and this bead and uh, uh, thread is giving them the way to coil around this bead and that eventually uh, compresses the area for the DNA storage that's the actual concept behind this structure okay now we'll go to the detail and uh, advanced structure of this so I'm not going to talk about nucleosome in very basic level so this is the nucleosome structure how we come to know what is the actual nucleosome structure we can utilize different nucleus enzymes we can act we actually cleave the DNA strands and if we use these enzymes usually we use the micrococcal nucleus and this micrococcal nucleus is a nucleus enzyme which is derived from micrococcus or micrococcal bacteria My, uh, so we can take this nucleus we add it and this nucleus can cleave at a particular site if we use uh, a fewer concentration of nucleus this micrococcal nucleus it will leave some sites like that and if you utilize this uh, for more extensive digestion we will finally lead up to the formation of something like that so what we end up with we can see two uh, different regions inside that one region is uh, the bead which is uh, tightly surrounded by the DNA and the second structure is a something small part of the DNA segment which is linking uh, such two beads uh, with each other so we end up with these two parts one is the bead uh, wrapped around wrapped by uh, DNA another one is the linker uh, uh, region this is called the linker DNA so linker DNA and the DNA wrapped around the bead so we end up with these two parts now we can uh, we can look at these parts by um, running an agarose gel so you can see this uh, case in this agarose gel we can uh, look at these different structures okay now if we go on and discuss about uh, the proper arrangement of those subunits because the subunits arrangement are really important in this case so you can look at the four different subunits H2, H2, B, H3 and H4 we can see they are having almost a similar type of folding regions now uh, both of them are having this folding regions if you look at this protein amino acid uh, polypeptide chain now you can see one is N terminal and another one is the C terminal H2 and H2 be resembling very close structure as well as the H3 and H4 with each other but H3 is having uh, extra domain of his folding but otherwise all the other uh, do, uh, subunits are having almost similar kind of folding domains okay the most important thing uh, above all this H3 uh, region because this H3 region or H3 subunit is having some extra fold now this extra fold is actually helping uh, this uh, this 
H3 to fold a little bit differently, and this H3 is also uh, is is the most important among all uh, due to the regulation step. We'll learn them later uh, about the histone modification. If when we talk about the histone modification, these all histone proteins can be modified, and why we need to modify the structure, we'll find it later. But uh, just uh, for now, uh, you can uh, remember or you can memorize this thing that uh, this H3 is the most important among all. Okay. Now, if I look at uh, the arrangement of these subunits, that's uh, not like that. That four subunits come in and attached with each other to make a uh, mm, tetrameric structure like that. Uh, the actual answer is that they come together to make dimers. Now, H2A and H2B come together to make a dimer of H2H2B, and H3 and H4 in turn will come and make a tetramer with each other. So, this is the actual arrangement from a monomeric form. So, from a monomer of H3, from a monomer of H4, they will arrange. Two of the H3, two of the H4 will arrange to make a H3, H4 tetramer. This tetramer means they are forming uh, by the four protein subunits. Two of H3, two of H4. Now in case of H2, H2 be dimer. Uh, one H2A, one H2B monomer will come and attach with each other to make a dimer of H2H2B. Now such two dimer of H2H2B can come and make tetramer of H2H2B. Now this thing uh, just. Keep in mind this thing. So these are the different folding pattern between H3, H4, and H2, H2B. H3 and H4 means four monomers. So first monomer subunit, uh, H3 two monomers, H4 two monomers come together to make a tetramer at the first place. But in case of H2, H2B, they first make a dimer by attaching one of each monomers. Then those dimers will come to make the tetramer. That is the formation unit. These are these are the actual uh, arrangement of this dimer. Uh, this so ultimately we end up with. Eight subunits, so we call it a octamer. We call it the histone octamer. Okay. Now, if we move on, now you can see the arrangement. Now you can see this H3 and H4. These are the monomers. They will come together to make arrangement like that. Uh, and H2, H2 B come to make a dimer. Now two such dimer will come and finally make the tetramer. Okay, of H2, H2 B. But at the first place, the H3, H4 tetramer is made directly from the monomers. That is the difference between uh, this H2, H2 B concept and H3, H4 concept. Now another important thing which you must be noticed in this case is that uh, these two different terminal. Now as you can see, uh, they are made up with both C and N terminal. But the N terminal region is slightly more extended than the C terminal region. Thus, this H ter uh, this N terminal domain is placed outside of this of this tetramer of H C H four as well as of this dimer of H two H two B. And you can see importantly. So in 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 uh, terminals are putting outside. Uh, but in case of uh, in case of H2 H2 B one of the C terminal is putting outside, but in case of H3 and H4 all of the N terminals are putting outside, but the C terminals are embedded inside of this tetramer. Okay, we have a significance for that. Cell so need this uh, to confirm that the N terminals are putting outside because. Again, when we talk about the histone modifications, which are very very important and key steps of DNA transcription regulation and transcription initiation and all these things, uh, we need this N-terminal domain to modify these histones. And these histone modifications will allow us uh, to have DNA as a transcript, uh, to have DNA to trans uh, as a platform or as a template strand to make a transcript of uh, RNA and then to translate that into proteins. Okay. Now uh, the arrangement: H3, H4 tetramer will come and sit, uh, and H2, H2 B dimers. Again, two di two of them dimers are come to make a tetramer of H2, H2 B. Now again, the placement is also specified. That means the H3, H, uh, H3 and H4 uh, tetramer will always be placed at the site where uh, the entry and exit site of the DNA comes in. So if we think uh, this is the entry site of the, sorry, this is the entry site of the DNA and this is the exit site of the DNA. So the entry and exit site DNA at that part we have to place the H3, H4, H3 and H4 uh, tetramer. And on the opposite side where we are not having any entry or exit site of the DNA, all the site is closed. The H2, H2B tetramer is placed. The two of the H2, H2 dimers are placed, so we can call it. Uh, so let's never think about call uh, like H2, H2B tetramer. So call it H2, A, H2B dimer. Two of the dimers come to make a tetramer. Okay, so that's it. So H3, H4 dimers placed and uh, at the site of entry and exit of the DNA, and H2, A, H2B dimers are placed on the closed site of this nucleosome model. And you can see right after the arrangement of all those uh, subunits of histone octamer. 
all the N-terminal uh, N -terminal, uh, sites are putting outside of this construction. So no C-terminal is putting outward, all the N-terminals are putting outside. Okay, because again we need to modify this to have access to this DNA and we can do this by modifying this N-terminal domain, not the C-terminal domain. That's why the N-terminal domains are extended uh, and they are putting outside. Now if we look at the schematic presentation of the arrangement then you can find uh, this is denoted with color. Now another important thing I must tell you about this part is that the arrangement you can see this uh, blue is H3 and uh, green is H4 so that uh, the arrangement of this two layer two layer of all these subunits are not like that this two H3 just placed uh, one top of each other so H3 is here and another H3 is here so it is not like that the two H3 always stay together uh, on top of each other two H4 on top of each other not like that this is not arrangement of this this is arranged uh, just uh, just slightly bending okay so slightly bend it it, it, it arranged like themselves okay now if we if we utilize protease enzymes to cleave this DN strands we can also in uh, cleave this N terminal of this histone proteins and as a result uh, this this histone uh, this uh, compact DNA structure will enable uh, to be um, revealed the DNA uh, during the transcription process okay as a result of the destruction of N terminal domains now if we look at the arrangement and the symmetry of this uh, histone octamer and DNA structure now you can find something like that so these are the so N3 and X side that means these are the H3 H4 octum uh, tetramer and these are the H2A dimers now if I look at the structures so if if, uh, if this is the structure this is a schematic presentation of the same structure what we can find we can find one entry site one exit site and if we look at, a, uh, at, at an axis if we imagine an axis throughout so look think about this is a clock now if you look this is a clock this is the 12, 12 o'clock this is 6 o'clock 3 and 9 so if we draw a line or axis of symmetry from 6 to 12 o'clock then we can finally find something like that now if you slightly bend it then we can find a structure this is a side view actually so if we rotate it like that so we finally make something like that and this is a side view you can notice one important thing is that this side view suggests us that this is uh, this this wrapping of DNA is not almost 90 degree angle to this bead it is slightly bended look at see this part this is slightly bended so it's not complete 90 degree turn this is slightly bending okay so this is another important finding so these are all uh, small informations about nucleosome structures and all of these actually really count uh, we some of them uh, some of uh, these uh, reasons are we know some of them are we don't know but still these are uh, these are the findings and uh, the research is going on to know the control of uh, the dna accessibility during the transcription okay now uh, again uh, so this is called uh, this, so we can uh, say that we have we are having a partially uh, or not partially we are having quite uh, quite moderate uh, two fold axis of symmetry in this case because we can draw an axis and we have two fold on it okay so uh, now this is uh, about the interaction of these histones uh, with dna now very important question above all that why these proteins uh, are interacting with DNA uh, so if uh, uh, we need to wrap this thread around the bead the bead and thread must have an interaction with themselves because otherwise it can easily be pulled out right so there must be an in interaction between this histone octamer proteins and the DNA structure and the answer is yes there is an interaction and the interaction is not uncommon the interaction is very common interaction which is called the hydrogen bonding now there is hydrogen bond between these DNA strands uh, and as well as uh, the DNA phosphodiester backbones actually with this histone octamer proteins now normally uh, the phosphodiester backbone contains oxygen and that oxygen is helping them to make the hydrogen bond with this histone octamer subunits Okay. Now another important part about that this this DNA as we know are made up with two different groups. One is the major group, another one is the minor group. Most of the hydrogen bonding interactions are between the major group of, of the DNA and the histone proteins. But sometimes or fewer in fewer cases we can see the binding between uh, this uh, histone octum uh, with uh, the minor group of the DNA. Okay. But that is uh, rare in uh, really rare. Okay. So if we look at here in this case. Uh, 
some of the cases now this is in this case in normally in h3 h4 tetramer structure there are uh, the higher affinity they are having the higher affinity with the major group of the dna not the minor group as you can see in this case this is the major group this is the major group so these are the major group and you can see h3 h4 tetramer is having affinity much more with the major group rather than the minor group but in case of h2 a h2 b mm, and in case of some of the h3 h4 uh, dimer construction they m they may have interaction with the minor group but the actual hydrogen bonding is also always present uh, with the mo most of the time not always most of the time presented between the histone protein and uh, the major group but sometimes uh, for some verifications few uh, residues are uh, pop out uh, from the histone octamer protein and uh, that uh, can have an interaction with the minor group of the DNA sequence and it's actually helped this DNA to bend now another important thing I must tell you is that histone octamer proteins are uh, most of most of the the protein subunits and most of the amino acid sequences are made uh, with uh, the positively charged amino acids and that give the overall histone octamer uh, protein a positive charge now as we know the DNA backbone is uh, as it is made with the phosphate group so it is slightly negative in charge not slightly it's, it's fairly negative in charge so this DNA has higher affinity with uh, the positively charged histone so that again tells us why hist DNA chooses histone protein to wrap themselves around uh, because uh, it is made up with those uh, positively charged amino acid sequences and DNA is uh, a negatively charged sequences that's why Okay, now another uh, again another important finding. So we are, I'm telling you a lot of different uh, small small findings. So if you all, all of them are logical though, but still uh, if if you have a hard time to f uh, figure it out, just look at these pictures. It will tell you. Uh, it will help you to understand what is the actual thing. Now another important finding you can look in this case that H3 and H2B, uh, these uh, N terminals are popping out uh, from the in between portion of the DNA strand so again uh, let me explain this picture actually so this is uh, pretty hard uh, for you to understand now this this parts this uh, dark color parts are uh, the histone protein and this uh, helical structure as you can see in this case the gray helical structure the gray helix is the DNA and the way we are looking at it it's the side view it's a side horizontal view of uh, the histone uh, octamer with the DNA sequences. Now you can see these two uh, two DNA strands uh, are going uh, or wrapping this uh, protein, and in and from between these two DNA strands, uh, the H3 and H4 uh, N terminals are popping out and H2A and H H4 on the other side are popping out from top and the bottom of uh, this histone protein so that's another important uh, assumption uh, another important finding uh, I don't know why uh, this is actually happening but we generally see that H3 a, a, H3 uh, terminal is much more vulnerable to the modification than other things because H3 is having a really fairly long uh, N terminal so it can be modified in several different ways it can be modified by acetylation uh, it can be modified by phosphorylation and also uh, via the methylation in all these cases now uh, that's about uh, the basic structure of nucleosome and how nucleosomes are arranged together what is nucleosome uh, it's a content between the protein and the dna protein is called the histone it is made up with uh, eight different subunits uh, hc uh, four actually four different subunits two of them each we call in that octamer and h2 h2b h3 and h4 are the respective names and uh, they are also having those n terminals propping outside c terminals embedding inside and also there there is a specific arrangement of H3 H4 tetramer as well as H2 H2 B dimer to make this structure and there is also uh, the different levels of organization to make a DNA structure compact okay and there is also a very important uh, interaction between this histone octamer protein and uh, the DNA structure uh, to hold the DNA structure to uh, with this histone octamer okay so that's all about uh, that's a basic overview about nucleosome model and I hope it will help you thank you